A couple of months ago, I installed a very cheap and simple 12 volt fan in my Bushman upright fridge, which we're inside right now. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll link it in the description down below to show you guys how I went about installing that fan. But to roughly summarize, the basic reason for putting that fan in was to get the air to circulate throughout the fridge freezer combo a little bit more effectively. The problems that these models have is because there's no uh, factory standard fan built in. If you pack these beyond the recommended limit, like literally cover every single shelf full of food, there's no real way for the air, the nice cold air, to circulate from the very top of the unit down to your food in the very bottom of the fridge. So yeah, when you pack them to the limit, you can notice the stuff at the top is extremely cold, pretty much frozen, and the stuff down the bottom is only just lightly cool. So the fan was just a very cheap and easy way to get that air blowing around and ensure everything in the fridge remained at a nice constant temperature. However, mine's working a little bit too well. So essentially, because mine is just on constantly, when that switch is on, the fan is running, blowing directly on that freezer and circulating that air. The fridge never thinks it's down to the correct temperature and essentially is just running 24 seven while that fan's turned on. And the result of that is if I have this fridge on setting number two, for example, like it is now, two out of seven, it goes all out of seven, and then I turn that fan on, I'll come back in a couple of hours and the fridge will be down to minus five, because it just, it literally just doesn't stop running. So it doesn't mean it's a waste of time, I've been using it effectively as a bit of a turbo switch over the past couple of months. So if I notice the fridge is struggling for whatever reason, I'll just jump in, turn that fan on, leave it for a couple of hours, and that will circulate that air and get the temperature nice and consistent throughout the fridge. But in the perfect world, I'd be able to leave that fan on 24 seven and be able to select the temperature I want the fridge to stay at, and then the fan would kick in and out accordingly. And I've been on Amazon and I found something that should solve that problem. So the solution is hopefully quite simple. I picked up one of these 12 volt temperature controllers from Amazon, cost me $17. And if all goes to plan, this should allow me to set the temperature I want that fan to kick in and then turn off again as well. So it comes with a temperature sensor at the back there. I'm gonna run somewhere within the fridge, probably down nice and low, because that seems to be the area that struggles the most. Now it is worth mentioning that you can buy pre-made kits that come with a fan, a temperature control like this, and a mounting bracket all in one unit. That's kind of where I got the idea for this temperature controller from. They are quite expensive though, like in excess of $100. So in my opinion, DIY is probably the, the better way to go. Definitely gonna save you a few dollars. Anyway, let's go get this installed and see how well it works. The first important step is to remove the fuse for the fridge or simply unplug it because we don't want any power running through the wires we're about to work on. So I'll try and run you through my plan for the wiring as best I can. So I've just removed the electrical tape from uh, here and here so you can hopefully see those joins a little bit better. Essentially this red and black wire here, they're my constant positive and negative for the built-in fridge light. So those two connections have power constantly so long as the fridge has power. And here we can see that's where I've tapped the current fan assembly into uh, the positive and negative there. So to install my temperature controller module, essentially I'll be leaving this positive installed, but I will be adding an extra positive into that connection just there. And that will be run back down to this controller module. I'll then be disconnecting this earth power supply from this join here, and that'll be routed instead down to the back of my controller module again. I'll then be running an extra earth back down to this same temperature controller module. And then I'll be getting a little bit of extra wire and just bridging the connections between these two. And then theoretically, we should be good to go. Now I'm gonna be mounting this just up there next to the fan. It all fits in there nicely when this is uh, reinstalled. And then I'll be running that probe down and having it somewhere in the bottom of the fridge. So the wiring for these systems is pretty straightforward. You'll see on the back of the controller, there is four inputs down the bottom, positive, negative, S1 and S2. Pretty straightforward. Basically, we just take the fridge's power supply, the positive and negative from that light assembly, bring it down and connect it into the positive and negative slot here so this system has power. When it's ready to turn your fan on, all it's gonna do is connect the S1 and S2 posts together to make that happen. So to make this work within my system, I've given my fan a constant power supply from that light. So that's connected, ready to go. However, my earth, I've connected to this S2 post. 
So essentially when this is activated, I want there to be earth coming from S1 to S2 to complete that circuit and turn the fan on. And so I've just borrowed the ground from post number two here. That's just what this little loop is here. So my ground car comes into this unit in the ground post here. It's then connected across to S1. When the unit activates, it then bridges that again to S2 and the fan turns on and my fridge gets nice and cold. After shortening the wiring, I decided to drill a small hole in the side of the temperature controller unit, and this allowed me to feed the wiring in through the side rather than the bottom for a neater look. And just like that, my new temperature controller is fully installed in the fridge and working a treat. I've uh, tucked it in between my fan assembly and the edge of the fridge behind this light system here and it just fits in that space perfectly. Still pretty DIY, but I am happy with the result. I've also routed the temperature probe down to the bottom section of the fridge, the area that seems to have the most trouble getting that coolness circulated to it when the fridge is absolutely chockers. So that's where I wanna be monitoring the temperature from. And I also realized that I'd run out of silicon when I went to stick this in place. So I've chosen to attach it with some uh, mounting tape instead. I've had varying levels of success with it in the past, so we'll see how it goes with this. But as always, with all these DIY type of videos, if there's anything to update you on on that front, Going forward, say three months, a year or two years down the track, I'll pin a comment in that comment section down below. So jumping into the unit, it is pretty straightforward. Essentially, we can see two readouts on the front of that temperature controller there. The red number refers to the temperature inside the fridge right now, according to that temperature probe. So I've installed mine down the bottom of the fridge there. And that's telling us that it is 20.2 degrees within the fridge. The blue number down the bottom is what temperature we've got this unit set to. So we're telling that unit we're trying to make the fridge one degree. So, so long as the temperature inside is hotter than one degree, it's gonna have that fan running, trying to bring that temperature down. But the more important thing is when the fridge does in fact reach one degree, it's gonna turn that fan off, preventing it getting any colder. And that's what we really want. To change that temperature, super easy. Just click that set button in the middle. That's gonna make that blue number flash. Now we can use the arrows either up or down to change that temperature. I'll set it to I'll leave mine set on one degree because that's what I want my fridge to be. Give that a second to lock those settings in place. Van kicks back in and away we go. There is a few more settings within these modules too, so we'll run through a few of those now. If we hold down the set button in the middle, it's gonna bring us into the main menu system and we'll see it says P0 there. That goes all the way up to P8 for different things we can change about this uh, module. We'll start with P0. Essentially, we're telling the unit whether we're trying to cool the space down or heat it up again. Obviously, as a fridge, we're trying to cool it down, which is why that was on C. But if we're installing this in a space we're trying to heat up and this uh, module was plugged into a heating source instead of a fan, we'll just press set again to get into this section and toggle it up to H for heating instead of cooling. And now, if I let that lock into place, we'll notice the fan now does not kick in because it's going, okay, you want to heat the space up to one degree. Right now it's 19.9, therefore we don't need to power up whatever you've got connected. However, we're inside a fridge, so I'm gonna change that back to C for cooling. There we go. So continuing through our settings, we get to P1, which is our temperature variance. And this is basically when we want our fan to kick in compared to the temperature we've got set on the, uh, the bottom screen here. So if we go back into that temperature variance, I've got mine set to one, one degree. So basically if I have my fridge temperature here set to one, the fan's not gonna kick in until the internal temperature reaches up to two degrees. So that's to be one degree of variance between my setting and when the fan actually kicks in. And I'll give you an idea of what that actually looks like. So I'll just set my fridge here to 19, for example. So now I've told the module I want the fridge to be 19 degrees, but I've given it a one degree variance, which means that fan won't kick in until the internal of the fridge is 20 degrees or higher. So right now the difference is only 0.4, so that fan's not kicking in. But if I reach in and grab that temperature probe to warm things up, as soon as we cross 20 degrees, we can see that fan kicks in. So that's essentially what that variance means. And the reason you might want to configure it like this, obviously you can go down to 0.1 if you'd like, but what that's going to do is that fan's going to spend a lot of time cutting in and turning off quite regularly. So this way, set it to uh, one degree variance. I'll probably set this to one degrees most of the time. Like that. 
And that means when it's on 1.1, 1.2, that's fine. The fan will stay off and it won't actually kick in until the fridge reaches two degrees inside. Then the fan will kick in and bring that temperature down to one before turning off again. Moving across to P2 and P3, these are the minimum and maximum temperatures you want this unit to operate at. I'm just gonna leave those completely standard because I don't see any need to change those. Uh, P4 is the temperature correction. So if you find the gauge isn't super accurate, you can click setting on that, jump into this and actually correct the, uh, the thermometer setting. If you find it's not super accurate, again, mine's brand new, so I'm just gonna leave it on one for now, jump out of there. Now, P5 is our delay start. So if I wanted to set this to, I don't know, one for example, and then our temperature rises from one degree to two degrees, having that set to one means it's gonna wait an additional one minute before it kicks that fan in. Now, for me, I don't really have any need to delay the start, but you can do that if you like. So I'll turn my delay back off or back down to zero. P6 is an alarm or a lock. P7 is a way of supposedly locking the temperature. Spill can't get in and tamper with it. However, I found even when I toggle that on, it doesn't seem to work for me. And lucky last, P8 is a way of factory resetting this to its default settings. If you have stuff around in the settings, you wanna get it back to its uh, factory defaults. So you basically just toggle that off to an on, leave it for about five seconds and it's gonna reset. So now I've got that all set up. The next step is gonna to be to test how effective that new temperature controller is in actually regulating that temperature keeping that air flowing around, but also turning the fan off when it doesn't need to get any colder. So to test that out, I'm gonna go inside and grab a bunch of food out of my home fridge. Actually, maybe I'll uh, get this down to temperature first and then fill it full of food. But I'm gonna chop this thing to the absolute limit, covering up all those shelves well beyond what you're supposed to do from factory. I'll then keep an eye on those temperatures over the next uh, three or four days with my little companion fridge thermometer here. Uh, obviously I've set that to one degree and I've set the variance to one degrees as well. So theoretically I should see pretty consistent temperatures between one and two degrees during all that time. But I'll report back in a few days and let you guys know what those results are. For me that will take the full three or four days. But for you guys it's gonna be as quick as this. So three days turned into about three weeks because life happens, you guys know how it is. But very happy to report that during that time, the fridge has remained absolutely full of food and that temperature has sat directly in between one and two degrees the whole time. Obviously a few fluctuations here and there, closer to two or closer to one, but it's always sat within that range which I'm very happy about. We've essentially been using this camping fridge as our home fridge for the past three weeks, which our poor Bianca has been very um, happy about. So every time she needs some food, it's out to the garage to get yeah, it. Yeah, Daniel has <laughs> literally been making me come to and from the garage instead of using the normal fridge in the kitchen. Our fridge in the kitchen is currently empty and everything yep, has been in this. all our food is right here. Um, <laughs> so, but look, it's been working well. I also stole the D-Max for a weekend of camping with my mm -hmm. family over the Father's Day weekend because Daniel was staying with his family. Yep. Uh, and not wanting to leave Daniel with no fridge contents, we ended up swapping everything back into our normal fridge. But to keep this full, we ended up putting like an entire block of Coke in the fridge, uh, which my family the thought was just... a really great dietary uh, idea for me. Um, yeah. I did get a bit of fun made of me for bringing such healthy... It looked healthy... like a Coke commercial to yeah. me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so uh, that was great. But no, look, it stayed, uh, it stayed on temperature even then. Yeah. Um, it was a cold weekend, but the temp was staying between like negative 0.4 and positive 0.6. But as yeah. I said, cold weekend. And also I did open the fridge at one stage and waited till the temp rose and then the fan switched on as soon as it went kind of over one degree. Yeah. And then I shut the fridge and- And a cold weekend is actually a good Turned test because that's originally where if you left that fan running, especially during a cold weekend, it would have kept that air blowing on the freezer yeah. and that fridge would have gone down to like minus seven degrees. Yeah, but so no, the fact it didn't. the fan didn't kick in is good news. And I had really nice cold cans of Coke. Yes, icy cold between one and two degrees of coke. Anyway, so there we go. There's the end results of our little uh, temperature controller in that Bushman fridge, plus the original fan upgrade. Again, if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it in the description down below and probably at the end of this video as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Happy camping.